Hola, mi gente linda, and welcome to Panavision, the Todo SoFlo podcast that brings you all local stories, news, and music with your spectacular, phenomenal, once in a lifetime talents. Annette Clady, the co-founders of Panamia Club. Thank you so much, Annette. Yes, Panamia Club is a collective that's making finding local musicians and artists and entrepreneurs easier than finding a ripe mango in Miami right now. So every episode will bring you a locally based para doing amazing things in their community. We'll talk about that. And then we'll also bring in a local musician um, to discuss their local, their recent projects. Yes, today we welcome Julie of Easy Peasy Tattoo to discuss queer and bi POC spaces in Miami. And later we'll hear from Alex and Chains to hear their latest from The Kids Are Not Okay, a 10 track compilation collab with queer and bi POC artists in the community. But before we get to that, Clary, como andas, girl? How you doing? Happy to be here, happy to be here actually. But this morning I was a little betrayed by my cafetera. You're, yeah. What did it do to you? My cafetera exploded. It exploded and then got coffee and grounds everywhere. So yeah, that's how my morning was. How, were you, are you okay? I'm okay now <laughs> because you brought me, full disclosure, pastry. So that made me feel seen and loved yeah. and appreciated. Of course, babe. So yeah, I'm doing yeah. well now. Um, but I'm super excited to talk about all the new finals we got this month or this week since our last podcast. Yes, yes. Who are we... Who did we get? So first and foremost, we got Girl Cop, a DJ based in Little Havana, that they're part of a two-piece live act called Rental Snakes. Yes. And then we also got Angel Baby, a Miami-based musician experimenting with genres, especially R&B, pop, and hip-hop, creating, and she says that creating has been incredibly healing. Oh, that's so, so yes. sweet. We also have Contigo, which actually they played at our event last Friday. They're a DJ based out of Miami, spinning house and techno, such as deep, acid, classic, disco, electric, all sorts of things. <laughs> They're very versatile, actually. That's they were awesome. like amazing in our event. Yes, they actually were spinning during our last event, Hara Luna, mm -hmm. and just yeah. the vibes were spectacular yeah. all night long next we have kitty boba tea house so this is actually a uh, pop-up vendor that i met during the festival last week at unseen at oasis Ooh, that looked so fun it was so so fun uh they specialize in crafting premium bubble tea drinks made with real fruits for uh, uh for fruit flavored teas and milk teas i really want to taste one of those yes yeah Th it was actually really good yeah it was so good i Oof. had one <laughs> which 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 flavor did you have um i think oh it was black sugar tea mm, yes delicious that was a good one it was yummy all right we also have neptune muse they're an independent singer and songwriter poet creative director astrologer dance and a budding producer so wow. it does it all really yes <laughs> amazing <laughs> then we have light ones an artist specializing in large-scale logo painting and letter work and as is a muralist as well Awesome. There's also Rosie. They're, uh, they go between Miami and New York City, um, and they're a DJ specializing in hard techno, tech, trance, gabber, and hardstyle. I don't, don't recognize, like, is. probably three out of five of those genres. <laughs> but yes, like, we yeah. to do. <laughs> yes. Um, into the hard photography, a professional photographer based in Miami, Florida, offering services in family maternity event and wedding photography. So if you need somebody to take your pictures for your special day, definitely hit them up. Yes, I'm really excited about this one. We also have a person named Gabby DiGiamarco. They're a freelance writer, independent curator based out of Miami, and they also work at a, a gallery called Camp Gallery. So I'm really excited to check that out. Absolutely. And then next we have Emily Topaz, an upcoming singer-songwriter in Miami, Florida. Sweet. I'm excited about this one. It took oh a minute. Oh, my God. Me but too. we got me the too. Pretty High Club. Yeah, yes. we did. Yes. They're a women-only <laughs> events for medical marijuana community. So, yes. Yes. We're excited about that yes. one. Yes. <laughs> super excited. Uh, shout out to them. And then next, another one that I'm super oh, excited yeah, about. Sure. Yes, we have Bold Events by Andrea Macias. They are an event coordinator and production company. And just like they... they have like a lot of interesting and innovative stuff coming up that we hopefully will will get a piece of in the future that's awesome awesome yes. we also have a love a locally curated online clothing store here in miami 
Awesome. And then we have Natasha Rumbos, an urban Latin pop singer, songwriter looking to sing at events. So if you have if the need for an urban singer, songwriter <laughs> for Latin music, hit my girl up. <laughs> We also got T. Scott Studios. They're a local artist selling art on Etsy. They make art prints, acrylic paints, mixed media art, just all the all the art you need. Yes. And lastly, we have Blinged by Amy. I'm excited about her because she is actually our first nail tech. Yes. 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 And yes. her nails are sick. Yes. Yeah. A personal win for right. us. So Broward based personal nail technician and first. specializes in acrylic sets, mani pedis, gel charms. So if you need a set definitely hit her up and that puts us at 178 banas if you can believe it yes. so so excited That's thank really you exciting. everybody for joining us um yeah. we actually got a lot yeah in, the, in these past we, two weeks we actually get so happy when we get new banas involved and in the community so thank you so much and if you want to become part of this community i know most of the people that we shouted out today are artists but we don't just exclusively have artists like we have food vendors, services, so whatever. Goods, goods organizations, yeah. everything under the sun. We have space for you. So if you want to get involved, if you want to be part of the collective, just reach out, DM us on Instagram, wherever um, you find us, and we'll let you know. Yes, yeah. it is free to join. Yes. And as always, shout out to Jen and Jeremy, our web yes. developers, for helping us develop our locals directory. Thank you so much. Yes. And as you know, it's important to stay educated on what's going on with our panas, but also what's going on in our local community. Yes. So luckily, Claudia and I are here to catch you up in lo que está pasando in South Florida in our segment, Meanwhile in Florida. Yeah, so first up, Meanwhile in South Florida, the day is here. We're fine. It's here. We are at the 786 Film Festival today presented by Omega Spit and hosted by Casa Crea. We're actually going to run out there right after this. Right yes, after this absolutely. So excited yes. to hear from all of those local mm -hmm. filmmakers. We've been shouting this event out for like the past two podcast episodes. Yes, but if you just found out about it right now, they're spotlighting local filmmakers from all experience levels in their community. So you can find the tickets on Shotgun or I'm pretty sure you can also buy them there. So yeah, if you're there, we'll see you. Yes. Also, another event happening today, uh, our pana, JK Hill, is collabing with Backroom Sessions for an event that they're producing at Naomi's Garden. And you can hear awesome independent local artists like a uh, friend of the podcast, Still Blue, shout out. Yes. Uh, Butterfly Snapple and Midday Moon. That is going to be at 7 p.m. at uh, Naomi's Garden. And I don't know where you can buy tickets, but check Backroom Sessions. Yeah, Backroom <laughs> Sessions for sure. So do you want to perform a mango season miracle? If you find yourself over endowed with mangoes, the news is that Zach the Baker is offering to turn every six mango or yeah, every six mangoes into a loaf of bread. So bring them six mangoes in exchange for one loaf of bread. <laughs> Until the end of June. <laughs> yes. And then also... Zach the Baker, please sponsor us. Yes, please. Also, Miko <laughs> Abana. Also, Jen, our, our lovely uh, developer, they actually have new music out with our other Bana, Igor. Yes. So please, please, please go out and check that out. New music. Yes. Music. And then in Panamia Club News, June 9th is our next podcast episode. So you definitely want to tune in to our next episode. We're going to be talking with Smash Miami and they are co a, a collective that is uh, specifically pushing for affordable housing in Miami, which is obviously something we're all interested in so mm -hmm. definitely tune in for that yes for sure and then the other news is that tomorrow is whoop our whoop. first club de pana it's in collaboration with dear eleanor you don't want to miss it it's gonna be a really really cute event we're gonna i'm gonna be teaching yoga and that's gonna be teaching some art um tickets are online uh on shotgun they're five dollars um and then also shout out to leo from pigeon society who made our uh, flyer design. Yes. So big thank you yes, he's that. a panel of ours. So the way that it's going to be working out with Club de Pana flyers is that every time we're going to be inviting artists in the community to design it for us. So we're already looking for our next des flyer designer. So hit us up and we will be more than happy to yes. work with you. These events are bi weekly. So the first one is tomorrow and the next one is Ju June 10th. So do you have that off the top of your head? It's my sibling's birthday, so yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Uh, okay, and then next news, 
<laughs> really cool okay really cool so we just finished recording on tuesday was it tuesday yes yes um a fanamia astrology reading by our resident astrologer cat aka earth palace and if that name sounds familiar to you it's because we had her as a guest in our last episode mm -hmm. and she talked a little bit about having uh like readings done for organizations which is exactly what we did we gave her the launch date for fanamia which was august 1st 2022 and she created a sunrise chart for our organization so we'll be releasing the highlights for that soon and if you want to read the whole reading you can check it out on our patreon speaking of which that's our last piece of news is that we've created a patreon so um, we're gonna have some really cool exclusive content on there a lot of you have been asking like how to support us if you aren't like a business or if you um, can't make it to our events. So that's a really good way to get a little bit more involved and then also support us, um, find some really cool uh, material, content. So yeah, check it out. Absolutely. And, and that's it for Meanwhile in SoFlow. If you have anything interesting going on, please let us know. You can reach out to us again on Instagram and we can add whatever it is that you've got going on um, on our next podcast. Awesome. Awesome. So... Now that we're all caught up with community things, we can finally bring in our lovely guest and querida pana, Julie of Easy Peasy Tattoos. Welcome, yes. love. Yes. Oh, let's get you a mic. mic. Here we go. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <Hello>. <laughs> Hi, beautiful. Oh, wow. You look gorgeous today. Thank you. I try it. <laughs> How are you doing? How was the drive over? Long, right? Oh, my God. So long. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes, maybe. <laughs> Two whole minutes. Oh, that Miami traffic for wow. you. <laughs> yeah, to give you all some context, we're like, what, on 73rd right now? Um, I was just at Easy Peasy, my studio, and it's on 79th and Biscayne. So, like, Right next to the Anderson Eastside Pizza, I could probably have walked here. <laughs> yes, yes. Great location. If you could Thank trust you. the weather to not rain on you. Right, or burn me alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, thank you for coming on. Please thank tell you us about me. yourself. Who are you? Who am I? My name is Julie Francis. I am a tattoo artist, a regular artist, <laughs> and uh, now I'm a business owner, which is pretty wild to think about. Wow. Congratulations yeah, on that transition. Congrats. It's thank you. not easy. Welcome to the club. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, my tattoo studio is called Easy Peasy. Um, I think it's pretty special because it's like one of the only queer spaces, especially tattoo spaces in Miami. It's owned by someone who is from Miami, <laughs> you know, a woman, and then also an artist because it's hard to find that combination of three things when it comes to a tattoo shop or like at this point in Miami's history, like any business owned yeah. by like a yeah. local, a woman. <laughs> like yeah, no, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. What part of Miami are you from? I grew up in Hialeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and by the fire station. If anybody <laughs> 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 by Okeechobee Road. The exact coordinates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Childhood home. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. So Tell us a little bit about how that was for you to open up your own business. Had you like had any experience having a business before or like was it like how did that happen? So this is my first time owning my own business. But the way I learned to tattoo was running tattoo studios for other people. Um, so I did have experience um, kind of with the management side of things and then uh, before that, like I put myself through school by managing a Starbucks and then I managed a nail salon and then I figured I wanted to tattoo. So then I started managing tattoo shops. So, wow. um, even though like I went to school, um, to do something creative and I've been like a magnet program since like middle school, it's just like capitalism just put me in management roles, <laughs> you know? Um, so it was, it, it, I feel like it was just a matter of time before I was like, okay, let me merge these two things. You yeah, know? no, that's really cool that you ever, you were able to like merge the best of both worlds like mm -hmm. now you're managing something that you love yeah that's yours yeah. no and I think when I decided to become a tattoo artist I didn't think I would own my own studio or run my own studio but it's just like the more I was in the industry and the longer um I was back in Miami after school I was just like Miami needs this I can't believe there's no one nowhere doing this yeah you know? yeah and and honestly like you've built a 
a beautiful community around your shop and like so quickly too <laughs> because you started like October no I mean, and that's what's beautiful about Miami and what I think a lot of people miss out on is that, like, honestly, I just had to open the doors and everybody just came, <laughs> you know, and started doing their thing. Like, I just keep the lights on and keep it clean and people are just, like, doing their own thing in the space. Um, so sometimes I feel like I get a lot of credit for, like, things that, like, other people are <laughs> doing in my space. So, uh, I, honestly, I just always try to turn the conversation back around to the artists that are working at my studio, the people who are coming to me to run events there, just like different things. Like on, like my idea was just like, I'm paying rent, might as well just open the doors. When we're not tattooing, we're doing other things, you know? So yeah, I think most of the credit I want to give to like the people with uh, the motivation to do things and they're just looking for a space to do it like y'all you yeah know? no absolutely we still want to give you your flowers though <laughs> thank you <Yes. laughs> it's a beautiful <laughs> shop thank you i actually i mean i i visited on one occasion um actually during like one of those events that you're talking about it was a, a fatty's reunion uh oh the clothing swap yes or? the clothing yeah. swap <laughs> it was a clothing swap i brought my sister and you know like my sister is like not super social so when i brought her into mm -hmm. this space i i literally just dropped her off because i had a meeting that i had to attend to um but when i came back she was in the best mood Yay. and she was like wow <laughs> like such an amazing supportive community and and she had like just a great time which like honestly as a as a big sister was like you know made my heart smile and all that <laughs> that's so sweet no fatties <laughs> is another thing that i do with two other people um liz who's studio sprite on instagram and nancy uh who is papaya dulce on instagram yes um the three of us are plus size baddies and we're like let's make a group for fat baddies fatties <laughs> yes and so naturally like we we've been doing fatties since before i opened easy peasy but like as soon as i opened easy peasy it was like come on it's gonna be like fatties hq <laughs> right <laughs> right no amazing so, so yeah like we we do some fatties events at easy peasy they're like his sisters <laughs> yeah. that's so cool i yeah. actually didn't know that yeah. uh -huh. awesome that's amazing i love how there are so many places in miami that are now like kind of hosting so many different things like right now we're in shotgun an o a shotgun office that also houses miami community radio yeah yeah and so like to find those places that are just like in so many different communities and attracting so many people it's Really yeah beautiful. and you know we're kind of in a similar situation too where um dear eleanor and now we have that collaboration where like they are going to be hosting our club de panas bi-weekly community gathering so yeah. it's like always super cool to kind of like stumble onto those collaborations where you're like oh wow this beautiful community is in this beautiful venue doing beautiful things great yes <laughs> we need more of those we yeah yes. do. yeah yeah well, I've always thought that there's definitely like two Miamis. There's like the made for tourists, glitz and glammy, like a show off -y Miami, which is like fun to be a part of sometimes and to be like, oh, I live where you vacation kind <laughs> of <laughs> situation. But, um, but then there's like the, like, I don't know, homegrown Miami and right. like the people that are from here, I have felt like are just so genuine and just want like the best for like their other people. And like, I feel like it's definitely like within like the Latin culture to just like connect your friends and your family and like, just like get everybody on board. And um, so I do feel like um, there is a beautiful community of queer people um, coming together and young people to make things happen that we want to see here. Um, Cause I think that we don't really want to leave Miami. People who leave Miami are usually forced to yeah. because mm -hmm. the things that they want to do just aren't happening here. Yeah, and it, it's like really difficult because it, it like happens a lot where we talk to, to people from my, like always you have that conversation where it's like, oh, I hate Miami so much, mm -hmm. right? That's <laughs> always like somebody talking about how much they hate Miami and then they list like obviously like all of the things that are obstacles and stuff like that. Which are valid, ob like valid 100 percent, 100 percent. But it, it, it like, it's sad because you see all the beautiful things and you see all the potential and it's just like, I don't know, it needs, it needs space. It mm -hmm. needs like structure and foundations that hopefully like you are, like you for example, are, are building in Little River and yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I think we and were thoughts. we were kind of like uh, DMing a little bit about this. Yes. About how there's like a lot of money in Miami from like international spaces and also from like New York and California and like, you know, no shade to people who want to come to Miami and like do things. I get it. Like Miami's great, but there really aren't any like protections in place for like locals that want to do things. And we're like getting priced out. Um, yeah. So I was blessed to find the space that I found that was like at a reasonable price that I could like keep up with because there, I did see some other spaces out there that were just way beyond my budget for like a right. hovel, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. Um, so, and it's because of that Miami connection that I found this space, you know, um, somebody telling somebody and then this and that, you know, so it's just, that's, uh, things worked out for me because of that. Um, but yeah, it's just, I would love to see, more people from Miami being able to open their own businesses and do things like that but it's just so difficult with like the economic climate <laughs> we're in right now and yeah just like the way politics are working here like I think we just saw um that the mayor was giving pretty much like a fast pass to like yeah. certain people to like build things um yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know Gladio was just talking to me about that earlier yeah. and I also saw that and we were like yeah that man's wild <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he shouldn't be. Yeah, he shouldn't no, be. he yeah, shouldn't yeah, be. For sure. um, uh, but meanwhile, yeah. people like us, we're just like we're just trying to do innocent things, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we're just like, trying to help communities, and it can be difficult. It can be really difficult. Like I definitely was. I, and opening a tattoo studio isn't even that hard when you compare it to like food industry or yes. even like um, opening a barber shop, like different things like that. Like o relatively opening a tattoo shop is kind of easy. And I still had days where I was like wanting to beat my head against the wall because of like right. the bureaucracy. And it's just like, if you want to um, put one toe over here, the city's like, give me my check. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just like money after money enough. Like, right. Yeah. And it took me a few years, to, like save up enough to open easy peasy. Yeah. Right. Oh, so this has been years in the works. Well, yeah, yeah. I think like um, as soon as I started working, um, tattooing in like these different studios in Miami, I was just like, there's, I mean, like I'm enjoying myself at the studio. We're friendly, but like, I'm not really feeling like, right. Like this is it, you know? Um, and then like, even my friends would come by to different studios I worked at and they're like, it's cool, but like, it's not you, you yeah. know? And when I used to tattoo at home, people love that. Um, and I think, uh, I, I have a couple of clients that like didn't get tattooed by me when I was in a studio cause they just like missed getting tattooed from my house. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think like after a few months of working at, um, my last tattoo studio, I was just like, okay, I'm going to start putting away money and like planning, um, to open my own space. Cause it's, it's time. Yeah. yeah. I think my first time hearing about easy peasy was I was at a, at a dinner at Finca Morada mm. and, uh, a like probably half of the people that were there while they were leaving they were like yeah we're gonna go to easy peasy they're like what is that they're just like they're, it's just like the queer hangout spot <laughs> the queer hangout spot i love that <laughs> and um and i just like wanted to hear like about how like you built like because i think like now more than ever too in like the political climate that we're in um like we might like miami like florida's obviously being you know terrible to <laughs> to, <laughs> to people yeah. that are gay and like minorities and all that yeah and undocumented we, people yeah um and we like to I, I think people in miami like to think that like oh we're like an island that doesn't really affect us but yeah we're not we're really not. florida but it's yeah not, but we're not right mm -hmm. like i think like a, a book just got pulled out of all of the miami dade schools off of like one parent like um you know complaining about it right the so, aclu i think is also like suing to um have like all of the counties like re redrawn because of racial gerrymandering wow. which is also like a huge issue when it comes to like our communities having a say yeah yeah and our voices being heard and so i just like wanted to talk to you about like how can like if other places want to build safe spots for people of color or queer people like what are some tips that you would give them like what does that look like on a mass like how can we make more inclusive and safe spaces I mean it's kind of like I was saying earlier it's like especially if you are white like just sit down and like open your doors and let other people do things um obviously I have a responsibility to keep my space clean and safe and like not let um bigoted people in but that's just 
I mean, it's everything I do with Easy Peasy, it's like directed towards queer people. Like I'm not even worried about sanitizing the way Easy Peasy looks to like be acceptable to other people. And I feel like I have worked in spaces before where they have been afraid to be like openly political about certain things. They're just like, well, we tattoo, we're not like a politician. You know, it's kind of like, yeah, but you kind of have to have opinions about these things and like be outspoken about like what you stand for as owners or, you know, as, as people with a business in this community. Um, I feel like at this point, there's no such thing as being unbiased. Yeah, yeah. So maybe there never was. I'm very vocal about what I believe in, what easy peasy is. Like, I don't shy away from using, like, queer hashtags, like, queer this, queer, queer, queer. Like, I'm not not scared um, to be labeled as queer, (laughs) like, which I think (laughs) some people are. And, and yeah, when I, uh, when I'm doing something in easy peasy, like, again, like, I just open the doors, and we have a good time, and I think that's why people feel welcome there, because it's, it's just, like, easy peasy, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like, and that's why I named it that as well, because that was, like, the culture that I wanted in the space. I just wanted people to feel like it was unpretentious and open and fun and we're just gonna have a good time, like wholesome. And that's how I feel after every event we have there. I'm just like, this was so wholesome. <laughs> like, so, so nice, you know? That's so great. I always think that when you name things, y- there's an intention behind it always. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like names are so powerful in, in creating that intention, but it's also like the way that you've curated the space, which like, you know, as an artist, I, I want to ask you about because it's so pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Who designed it? Who did that? Who won? So the yes. floors, which are you see are like kind of white, checkered yeah. like kind of situation. Those were already in there. Um, and so I was just like, okay, I'm not good about to tear these out. They're cute, but they are kind of loud. So I was just kind of looking for colors that would go with it. So I picked that like cute coconut color that's on the wall. My friend um, Nancy helped me a lot with that. I just called her. I was like, what are you doing? I want to go to Home Depot and look at paint. And she's like, <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> those friends and then and then yeah like a lot of the furniture is just from offer up um and that's pretty much it like just want it and it's like quintessential like miami kind of furniture yeah. too like yeah. the colors and the laminates and everything um and then the murals on the wall i wasn't sure i wanted them at first but then like as we were in the space we don't have very many windows um, so I was just like, we need to bring some more like light in here. Um, right. and there's only so many mirrors you could put up. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> me and one of the other artists, Pammy, we just started drawing on the walls mm-hmm. and then like we would paint whenever we had free time or like, uh, uh, whenever one of us was like going through something, we'd be like, I need to paint <laughs> and just like grab oh. the little paints and like start going at it. So, I mean, like anytime you're in easy peasy, you might see like an extra little flower on the wall or like the bathroom Aww. has another coat of paint. Like we're all just like doing it whenever we can. That's gorgeous. It's like a living space. That's yeah. Like- and that's kind of one of the again if I can do the furniture like everything is kind of like light and moves around like all of our tattoo beds fold up usually in tattoo studios you see like a lot of heavy furniture like yeah uh, toolboxes things like that maybe cabinets but like um when you come to like an easy peasy event whether it's like a movie or a fatty's clothing swap or something we fold up all the beds we stack everything up like so that space can be really opened up and i've thought about like oh man it would be cool to have this or that but then i'm like yeah but then the events and i can't do those so right um it's a very modular space like yeah for that reason it's very malleable very versatile Mm -hmm. i noticed it when i walked into the fatty's event and then um i would see pictures of of easy peasy like every now and then and it's like this is definitely different. Like moved around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it definitely has like a default <laughs> setup for like tattooing every day. But when we do events, we're just kind of like, move this, fold it up. <laughs> like it, we, we definitely open the space up. It's not a big space, but we do what we can with it. That's incredible. And um, I think just like as a, a last question, I'm, I'm curious, um, how, how do you pick your artists? I don't know if you do pick them, but like, how does that work? like out of curiosity a few of the artists that um i have in the space right now um so vu who is aloe arms and agua who is agua dulce on instagram Mm -hmm. um i had been working with them before um agua had met we were working at the ica together like back in the day 
And then Vu, we just became like Instagram friends and then eventually worked at Sky together and then found we worked well together. So obviously when I opened my new space, I was like, yeah, you come in <laughs> to both of them. Um, and they were both like, of course, like super happy because um, we all just wanted a queer space. And then like uh, they've introduced me to the uh, other artists that have come through, um, like Nadia, whose vessel works on Instagram. And then Pammy, I had been following on Instagram. So Instagram is like a big part of like finding other artists because a yeah. lot of us like we're too scared to be in big studios um, if you're like a non-traditional artist. Uh, so we're just like working from home, <laughs> you know, or working from an undisclosed location so the health department doesn't come get us. Um, <laughs> So it was more just like, okay, listen, like we have a spot that feels like home come through. And so I'm, I'm really happy that they've all felt welcome in the space. Mm, that's, that's incredible. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Gorgeous. No, but um, thank you again. I um, feel like a little bit of a hypocrite because I actually have never gotten a tattoo and I probably won't. I'm actually a very indecisive person, but gladi. <laughs> <laughs> but that's M6. okay you know that's why we do the other events too so that you could still come hang out with us and you don't have to be like a cool kid with a tattoo you know um, I had actually never been in a tattoo studio until I was like maybe 23 I'm 31 now uh, because what? I was so scared of them <laughs> I was Whoa. so scared of going into a tattoo shop because uh, wow. they were all just like, machismo, like dark, <laughs> da, da, da. if you want to get something cute or small, you're stupid, like that kind of feeling. Um, oh my gosh, that's actually so true now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just like, uh, you know, I want people to come hang out, obviously, to get a tattoo. That's how I make my money. That's my bread and butter. That's my creative process. But then like I want to host people. And we I, like we did a Twilight movie watching series. <laughs> we do the clothing swaps. We do um, little markets like uh, so I want people to come feel like they can hang out with us, even if they're not getting a tattoo. And sometimes getting a tattoo is so serious, you know, because you're getting something permanent or you're nervous. Yeah. But it's fun to have something that we could just hang out Yeah, as well. Yeah. And your space definitely um, attracts that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for, for talking with us, Julie. Um, we look forward to seeing all the beautiful things that are going to be coming <laughs> out of your studio in the future. And now we are actually really uh, excited to introduce this next guest. Um, so we're going to say goodbye to Julie. Bye. For now. <laughs> for now. Bye for now. Yes. And okay. now we are very excited to introduce our Pana Querida and former MCR resident, Alex and Chains. Hey. Good evening, ladies. Good Hello. evening. Welcome, love. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> excited to have you. Yes, uh, and we are actually going to be hearing a sample from their latest 10-track collab uh, compilation, The Kids Are Not Okay, that is going to be playing now. Yes. All right. Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about this. Uh, so this project is probably, like, the, the thing that I am most proud of as far as, like, output is concerned. It's... Uh, so I got together with my partner in our gays collective. We were originally throwing parties, but uh, we had gotten together sometime last year, uh, and we had a conversation just outside of the club that we were at, and we were just talking about how like the this was right before the don't say gay like the the House Bill 1557 uh, right before it had gotten passed. So it was like, is this gonna happen? Uh, and I mean, it did happen. But at the time, uh, we had a conversation of, well, we know immediately once this law gets passed, there's going to be legal initiatives that are going to, you know, we, ha we have to do our best to, as people who are creating spaces, safe spaces in, in the community, that w it is also our responsibility as well to join in the fight against, like, kind of, like, draconian legislation. So we did it the best way that we knew how. Well said. And South Florida, as you guys know, uh, is just so full of amazing raw talent, mm -hmm. right? And in the queer scene especially has some really amazing creators. So it was just as easy as reaching out to all of those people who have, like, you know, people who I've seen grow, people who I'm proud that I was able to give a platform at some point before. It was just like really calling on those people and also people that I admire, people who have been uh, a part of queer culture and a part of the underground scene in Miami 
for decades. Uh, and all of those people like were just so supportive of the project and they all donated a track to this compilation. Uh, and all of the proceeds that we get from the compilation were uh, giving to Equality Florida who are suing the state uh, with the Don't Say Gay laws and moving forward all of this new legislation that was just passed. Awesome. No, that's that's incredible. Uh, and what is the name of the track that we're going to be listening to now? So the name of this track is uh, the artist is Tweaks, uh, and the name of the track is Forgive Me, Father, for I Have Sinned. Uh, and this track uh, is kind of important uh, in her journey because it's basically um, she si when she created the track, it was kind of in remembrance of like an upbringing in Jamaica and basically the dissonance that she had kind of growing up to a place where she felt so connected to the land and so connected to uh, its heritage, but also, you know, uh, everybody from the Caribbean knows that they're, the culture isn't necessarily the most inclusive and the best sort of space to realize one's true identity. Um, so it, it, the, that track is just so, I, I loved it. That's why it's the first track on the compilation because I, I really do think like it sets the tone for the rest of the compilation and the catharsis that I was trying to build with it. Incredible.
that yeah i love i i it's a great way to start off the compilation just because like i put together the tracks in a way too where like it starts off with sort of like the slower more contemplative tracks and then like i sort of end it uh with more club ready tracks uh just because like i think it was important to paint like all the pictures of the queer experience where you do have those soft contemplative moments but at the end of the day, we're a culture that's built in having fun and celebrating and collaborating and, you know, uh, party, party, party all the time. Yes. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one of our musicians that we had, the first musician we had on here, uh, Golden Floor, he has a song about climate change that's just a party song, too. So <laughs> <laughs> You have to find celebration in all of it or else you'll, it'll drive you mad. Yeah, absolutely. That's true. That's true. Um, so yeah, we'd love to hear a little bit more about like how you found music and your experience like as a musician. So uh, I was I'm, I'm like classically trained. I was in I was in choir for like eight years, probably up until like junior or like the beginning of senior year. But in that time also, like I had like a very deep affinity at the start of high school, like up up until now, like for like electronic music also. Mm -hmm. I was always, I was like the one person who was like listening to electronic music, like always wanting to go out to the club, even though I never could. And then I turned 18 and then I could go to the club. <laughs> I was, I'm born and raised in Orlando too. Um, but I knew like towards the end of, of high school that I had wanted to move down to Miami. Uh, like it was always like a dream. It was always like, you know, I am going to move to Miami and then uh, I, I did I got to go to FIU and um, It was like how did it, it feel? How did I feel? Well, how did it feel like once you got here? Well, it was like great, but also it was like a complete and utter failure I only lasted a year at FIU, but I found Miami's clubbing scene though on um, so, you know, yes. one didn't necessarily influence the other in a really good way. So I ended up moving <laughs> back to Orlando and then I got into like Orlando's like nightlife scene, like a lot. I, it started off like I, you just make friends with everybody. It's a very small community over there and you just make friends. And then I started to want to like write about events, too, just because like I have a passion for writing also. And I'm like, you know, who's chronicling this, you know? when history is being made, so to say. Uh, and But I, I still had a relationship with Miami, though. And this was, like, when the Electric Pickle was still open in Wynwood, uh, which is, like, kind of one of the... It was, like, kind of the pivotal, I feel like, dance music institution, like, of its time. Uh, it was, like, one of the first clubs that opened up in Wynwood. And it really, at the time, was, like, focused on, like, like the real quality underground sound and so it was kind of like going there i was always going there and and you know i befriended the people there and that's kind of just like how i got into the miami scene in general and uh i also at the time uh started like working with three points too i was like working with cool. an artist who works for three points and like it was just like being in in that scene and then you start to work like other events and i was like kind of doing like a hospitality role and like a stage managing role but also i was still writing too uh, and I've always been passionate about the music. I think that's like at the base level, everything it's for me, I'm just passionate about like music and dance music and, uh, the people who make it. So like, it's always been kind of like a dream of mine to exist in that space, you know, using what I think like my greatest ability, which is like the gift of like connecting people and being able to connect with people. Uh, Fantastic. and like, that's kind of just my ethos of being in the scene, you know, um, I want to be able to bring people together. So uh, fast forward to a post pandemic society, right. uh, when we're all getting back to getting together. Uh, it, my uh, a good girlfriend of mine, the one who I do uh, this project with uh, MBMB, uh, she also has a track on the compilation as well. Um, we had that conversation and we put this together. But uh, even before that, when we started Gaze, uh, 
that was a, it was it was me, her, and Gami, who is ultra them, who is kind of like she's a star in in the queer underground, and I think like she's the main player of of who has made uh, the queer underground what it is today. Uh, so we all got together and we're like, let's just, let's do something together. We have to throw in like a little barbecue for our friends, like, uh, a little bit earlier. And then when, when Pride was coming up and we had like the opportunity to, to host an event. So we hosted our first gaze, uh, and it was like a madhouse. It was during when Pride. So it was like, it was a true celebration. And we had it at ATV records, which is like electric pickle 2.0 after electric pickle closed, they opened that location downtown. And it was such a spectacular night to see a place that's usually filled with like, you know, hetero, straight, cis people to be filled with nothing but queer, queer people. Like it was just like a beautiful sight to behold that we can occupy the, uh, these spaces and like also to, you know, we had a headliner, but also we filled it up with like the community too. I think we had a pressure point play that night and it was just like, it, this is what we can do. We can link like people who are so talented and undiscovered here in Miami with like kind of bigger artists. And that's like the bridge that I'm trying to build because I think like in the grand scheme of the underground across like the world, like Miami often gets like looked over just because I think people already have like a preconceived notion of what we are. Like it, we're just sort of gaudy and like, you know, tasteless and you know how, what people say about Miami, oh my God. especially yes. like New Yorkers. Yeah. So like they don't let us evolve. Yeah. <laughs> it, but also too, you have to remember like Miami is a, a young city. Like we Miami as, ex as it exists today, has been around for less than a hundred years. Yeah. Mm. So we haven't had time to develop like other major cities. I feel like we're definitely very under misunderstood. misunderstood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. We're finding our way though, I think. Yeah. M more so now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of a lot of the youth actually, a lot of like young people redefining it. So yeah, thank you so much, Alex, for talking with us, but don't go away yeah. just yet. We're gonna ask Julie to come back onto this onto our little space here. We're gonna have to scoot over a little bit. Yes. For our segment. Pass over the mic, please. Oh. Yes. Go. Yes. You guys keep pulling mics out of like every direction. <laughs> <laughs> we come prepared. Yes. yes. And uh, now, welcome back for our segment, Kiki. 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 Where Gladi, Julie, Alex, and I will answer your questions. So this is where like each of us ask answer a question from the audience. So I'm going to be asking the first question, and it is for Julie, mm -hmm. and it is from our beloved Pana B from Chill Otter. And and she's asking you, when do you feel the most valued and appreciated? Definitely as we're cleaning up from one of our events. Like, e okay, it's either like in the, in the midst of the middle of an event when everybody's like laughing and having fun and blah, da, 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 or it's like after when we're cleaning it up and like we're just kind of like reminiscing about the event and like how many people came through and how crazy it was or um just how sweet or whatever just like reminiscing on the event so i definitely i would say like it's when the space is like full of people i think is when i'm just like oh my god <laughs> this i did this yes yeah. i can mm -hmm. definitely relate to that yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah there's definitely a moment in an event where you look around you see smiling faces you're like wow i did I did good. You did something. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's tangible. Yeah. yeah, I know the feeling very well, and it's like it's fulfilling. It's there's so there's, there's it's no magical. feeling like it. Yeah, there's nothing like it. Yeah, yeah. We're like actively making Miami worth being in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for for people like us, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think often it, they kind of like that makes the feeling better. Of like, I feel like sometimes it feels like it's built. You're building on quicksand here because there, there's always some sort of glass ceiling to break. But like it's when you're able to do that, like it just feels yeah. so good. I have a Capricorn moon, so that's part of the thrill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Okay. So for Alex, mm -hmm. we also have a question from B as well. Um, when have you felt most understood? When have I felt most understood? I feel like I am most understood. Also, too, because you can't imagine how kind of like hard it is to explain uh, like a nightlife pathway 
uh, to them, you know? Like, to them, I feel like they just think, like, I'm, I'm going out and I'm partying and I'm, like, whatever. But I'm actually trying to build something and build on a community. They just can't perceive that. But I feel most understood when I'm with, like, the people who are closest to me, the people who are doing this also, because we all come from the same cloth, essentially. That's why we all connect. We're all little kids of the night. <laughs> That's really yeah. cool. And, um, like, I did want to ask you, so, like, what is, what is gaze exactly? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so gaze, it's hard to say what it is specifically, but what we are for sure, I think are, <laughs> I'm sorry, oh my gosh, <clears throat> are just two friends who want to build, build on the community here, you know, whether it's through events or whether it's through these compilations, we just want to make a statement with, with the music that we like. Okay, awesome. No, just because... <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, sorry, I love you. Here no, you go. Yeah. Oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah, yes. no problem. I get the same when I'm talking a lot. I feel yeah, like that's why I try to keep water here, but every time I <laughs> have water here, it spills. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> like, Philip's, like, nodding in the back, like, <laughs> I have to clean that a up. A menace. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to ask this next question, and it's actually for the both of us from Navo. Okay. Dot CS. Okay. And Thank you, he's Nouveau. asking if we always host and attend events together. The answer is we try to because it's more fun that way. Yes. It's more fun when you're yes. around with your friends. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the fact of the matter is that we try to do everything all at once and it is a lot. So sometimes we do need to divide and conquer. But especially for the important things, we always try to make sure that we're here together. So the podcast, we always host it together. Events, we always like host them together. Yeah. Tabling, we always try to table together. If we're missing, I take notes. So like we take notes for each other so we can be on the same page. Um, but that's actually kind of like where it all started because like before when we ran our own separate businesses, um, it was a lot to do, um, and we would sometimes when Annette was at an event that I wasn't at tabling myself, I would meet up like a little bit after the event or like before a little bit like before it closed so that like she had someone mm -hmm. to help out with like breaking down a tent because that's not an easy thing to do. It's, it's like and a the, tent. And that's by... like friendship. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> nah, I think my it's just better that way. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All right. Cool. So I think this you or me. Who's do I ask? I don't do know. no. I did. Okay, questions. you go. You go. <laughs> That's enough questions. Okay. That's enough? No, we'll have one more. We'll have okay. one more. Okay. 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 What's the biggest misconception about you? Thanks, B, for this question. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Biggest misconception about me is. Mm, well, there are two things. One is that uh, most people think I'm younger than I look. Most recently, I was teaching at a middle school, <laughs> and like one day, um, I had four people, including two students, ask me what grade I was in. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Yes. Um, I had the opposite. When I was in middle school, people used to think I was the teacher. <laughs> Did you get away with stuff that way? No, I was just like, I'm 13. <laughs> like, <laughs> was offended <laughs> but if if you're a teacher you you can pass with that whole i'm one of y'all yeah 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 i could definitely like play some tricks but no no i played it cool and then the other thing is that um i think specifically navigating in artist spaces um i tend to have like a little bit more of um i guess like a like a business mindset um, not because of anything but it's i i love the creative aspect of, of being an artist. But the fact of the matter, especially being in Miami, is that it's like very much driven in like revenue. And especially the way that like when I was running my individual business, I was an artwear brand. So like that specific route that I took was definitely, of course, a business. So um, I feel like when I en engaged often with like artists in the community, they kind of like sense that I'm not like full like free whatever like artist type and it's it's like I don't know it creates like a little bit of friction but it's not because I'm not like that it's just I'm always thinking about like how can I make this sustainable mm -hmm. of course yeah so yeah that idea of the the starving artist is 
really romantic, but that's not what we want to be doing. We don't. Right. We want to be, you know, abundance. We want to exactly. absolutely. You know, yeah. and it's 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 hard to affect change um, when you don't have any money. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, if we all were rolling in it, I f- this would be a completely different city. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is that like. We're all coming from very humble beginnings mm-hmm. and like, you know, you're just trying to make something and like, you know, you could have the best mission, right? But you got to have some sort of cha-ching, cha-ching, like, or at least somebody who can help out. I think that's like why in Miami, I think that's the power of networking too, is that mm-hmm. like, you know, if you at least can put on like a good attitude, you can at least like, there's so many people who have so much money here. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're just like real with people, I don't know, I feel like good things come to people who can go out and look for it and network it absolutely we need to develop schemes but like not in a schemey way but schemes to redistribute the wealth yes redistribution yes. <laughs> and I lift each other up yes. right exactly. kind of way. Yes. <laughs> for sure yes okay well thank you so much for uh, answering all of our questions and for coming on this podcast with us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you want to find out more about our amazing, beautiful, awesome guests, you can find Easy Peasy Tattoos on Instagram and then Alex and Chains. That's Alex with two X's and two S's. Alex and Chains. Not everybody gets that. No, no. <laughs> No, we, we double checked. We d- yeah, we, had, we looked at our notes. I thought it was three, but it's two. <laughs> it's two. It's two. It's yes. two. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and if you enjoyed our podcast and you want others to engage with their fellow Banas, leave us a review on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get our podcasts. And also now, subscribe to our Patreon. Yes. Yes. Okay, bye. Love you. Bye.